Good morning, afternoon, evening, guys. You're locked into Conscious Minds TV with myself, TVG. And today I'm going to be presenting Mercury the Messenger, which is my presentation. Um, the presentation will be split into four parts. Um, the first part will be the geocentric cosmic egg model. The second part, we're going to concentrate on etymology, Turkish, English, and Greek words relating to Mercury and um, words starting with M-E and M-E-R. The third part is the messengers in theology and uh, talk about the different um, archetypes like Buddha, Thoth, uh, Hermes, which all relate to Mercury. And then finally, the fourth part is uh, we're going to do a bit of syncretism and relate it to astrology. Um, the basis of this presentation was inspired by my brother Martin Kenny, uh, who did a two-hour presentation to Santos Bonacci on the geocentric cosmic egg model. And uh, he syncretized some amazing, amazing knowledge from all different backgrounds, from Egyptian mythology, Norse mythology, Hindu, Greek, and also current day um, modern science as well. But um, basically, the reason why I wanted to do this presentation on Mercury is because in his cosmic egg model, uh, he explains that Mercury is in the center of our flat Earth. And me being a very big fan, fan of etymology, I started looking into words that start with M-E-R and M-E, and I found a pattern that all words starting with M-E-R or M-E allude to being in the middle. So that's where my part comes in. But what I'm going to do before I get into that is explain his model briefly so you guys can get an idea of how my part bit ties into it. So if I skip past this slide, here you can see my brother Martin Kenny. Um, this is his model. It's basically the silver part you can see here is the egg which uh, we reside in. And each of these, um, how can I say, webs are torus fields, which encompass each different land, basically. So if you can see here in the center, what I'll do actually, I'll click to the next, um, the next slide and you can see it better. So basically he's pointing to the center, which is the North Pole on our earth. And uh, to many people, this is known as the Garden of Eden or Mount Meru, there's many different names for it. But uh, what Martin explains in this model is that uh, each one of these rings are different earth planes and they are ruled by different planets, uh, which they've got a sun and moon each, which are the seven planets. But in this centre one, he explains there is only one and he explains that it's Mercury and uh, the reason why Mercury resides in the middle is because Mercury is known as an androgynous uh, hermaphrodite. It's not male or female, it's both. So he explains that Mercury rules uh, the middle, uh, the first ring, which is also known, to the black, known as the black sun in the flat earth community. But yeah, then he then goes on to explain that uh, our earth plane, which is this part here, as you can see me circling it, is ruled by the sun and the moon. And then once you come out to these lands, it's ruled by Mars and Venus. And then once you come out to this land, it's ruled by Saturn and Jupiter. And basically, I'm just going to go through the pic so you can see his model uh, a bit clearer. Uh, if I go back, um, I suggest you check out his channel. I'll leave the uh, link in the description below. If you want, you can watch the full video and then come back to this. You might understand it more, but um, my presentation is based off of his presentation and uh, Mercury being in the center. Uh, just to go back uh, to another picture, uh, what this picture is showing here is that each of the concentric rings are guarded, not guarded as such, but have a torus field which, are, which is around it. And this corresponds to uh, modern day science where they talk about they can't get past low earth orbit because uh, there's the Van Allen belts. And basically all these toroidal fields represent the Van Allen belt basically. So I just wanted to add that. Um, 
bit of info. And yeah, like I said, I was watching uh, this presentation and something struck me about um, Martin always talking about Mercury ruling the center. And uh, yeah, if we, for people who know astrology and know about their planets, um, Mercury is known as a androgynous planet. It's not male or female, it's both, it's balanced. So again, this correlates with it being in the center. But what I'm gonna do now is uh, basically, uh, just to give you guys a brief background, uh, I come from a Turkish uh, Cypriot background, so I, would not, I talk Turkish and my parents also spoke Greek, so I understand them two languages. And what I often do is, when I'm looking at work uh, to do with etymology, I always, go back to them two languages to see if there's any differences or any connections. And I looked into a Turkish word starting with M-E-R and I found some amazing stuff. So I'm gonna go through some of them and explain how they correlate to Mercury and the meaning of Mercury. Uh, before I do that actually, I'm just gonna give you a brief um, know about the Turkish language. The Turkish language belongs to the outside branch of the oral Altic linguistic family, same as Finnish and Hungarian. It is the westernmost Turkic language is spoken across Central Asia and is generally classified as a member of the Southwest group, also known as the Oral's group. So the first word uh, that uh, struck my mind was Merkez, M-E-R, K E Z, and obviously tells you there, Merkez means the center. And like Martin um, said in his presentation, uh, Mercury resides in the center of our plane. Going on to the next word is Merhum. Uh, Merhum means deceased. Uh, also, other meanings in the dictionary, which I've got Turkish English dictionary, it, um, it says it. It's uh, people who God gives mercy as well. Following on is a word called Merkez Kach, which means centrifugal. Um, a very interesting uh, thing here about words. Obviously, we've gathered that Merkez means the center, but Kach in Turkish means go away. And obviously, if we've studied the work of like uh, Santos Bonacci and uh, Ken Wheeler, he talks about centrifugal force, which is force going away from the center, force of motion, which is magnetism. The next word is Merkez Jil, which is centripetal. And centripetal is going towards the center, towards um, counter space, basically. Following up, the word Merchek means lens. Um, in the flat earth community, uh, the center of the plane is also known as the, um, her eye zone, as in mother earth's eye zone, because this is where uh, her intent and uh, she uh, releases the uh, aurora, borealis, aurora borealis. So M-E-R-C-E-K is Merchek, which also means lens. Following on the word Merhaba, which is very similar to Makaba, is a Turkish way to say hello. And um, also, uh, as we know, the Makaba is our vehicle uh, to get into higher dimensions. Uh, Melek means angel. And uh, if you watch the work of Santos Bonacci, he always explains how M and uh, L and R are interchangeable as words. So um, also an angel would be found in a, how can I say, in a more spiritual place and a more uh, not so material, where, because the Garden of Eden is known more as an, a, a half physical and half ethereal. It's not quite like where we are. And also, if you see here, there's uh, the meaning of cherub. And uh, for people who know, have seen depictions of Buddha, uh, his early depictions are him as a young boy and of a like innocent person. So that has kind of some correlation because as we know, uh, Buddha 
also represents Mercury. Following on the word Merdiven uh, in Turkish means stairs or ladder, uh, staircase. So also what this word reminds me of is uh, Meru and Divine. Uh, and we know that Mount Meru is a place of divinity where uh, there's the Bifrost Bridge where you can go up to the astral levels, the higher dimensions. Uh, yeah, following on, there's a lot of English words also that start with M-E-R or M-E, which allude to being in the center or being balanced. We've got words like uh, meridian, um, merge, meet. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of other ones I've got as well. Uh, Mercado, which is meaning of a market, is where people gather in one place. And also... Uh, uh, in Greek, uh, M-E-S-A, Mesa, means inside. And obviously, if you saw the cosmic egg uh, model I showed at the beginning, Mercury is in the inside. Following on from that middle, also, it starts with M-E, and it said Messes in Greek. So following on from the etymology, I've showed that all the M-E words and M-E-R words allude to coming back to the center or being centralized or being balanced or going up towards heaven. So what, what I'm going to do is explain that um, in theology and mythology in many religions, many of the main messengers um, relate back to Mercury and uh, the meanings and what they did. So I'm going to go through each one and correlate it back to uh, what we're talking about. So the first person, or not person, the first archetype, should I say, uh, we're going to talk about is Buddha. Uh, Buddha means the most enlightened one. Uh, he's compassionate. He taught Dharma, which was the way of truth. Um, like I said before, uh, there's many depictions of Buddha as a small boy, which also means um, an angel or a cherub, which I spoke about just before. And uh, yeah, like I said, he's known as the god of uh, the planet Mercury. And also an another very interesting fact is Buddha is the root word for Wednesday, which is Buddhavara. And uh, if we know our days, there's seven days and uh, Wednesday is right in the middle. So... There's three days on each side, so Buddha lies in the middle again. Again, it relates to that centralization and being balanced. Uh, also, if you see Buddha's stance, it's a very, uh, it resembles kind of the earth plane with Mount Meru going up the middle. And I found that a very, another very interesting thing. And it's very similar to uh, the Macabre meditation, which is this picture here. And uh, going back again, uh, like I said, in the Flat Earth community, uh, Mercury is also known as the Black Sun. And there are very many depictions of him dressed in black. And obviously, this is one of them. Another interesting uh, thing I just want to touch up on is that uh, in the story of Buddha, his mum died uh, when he was young and he was looked after somebody else. And this is going to tie into enough, when I talk about Muhammad in the um, Muslim religion further down uh, in the presentation. So keep that in mind. So yeah, that's Buddha. Uh, the next person I'm going to talk about is uh, Hermes in Greek mythology. Um, Oh, another thing also I forgot to mention quickly is that um, obviously, like I said, uh, Mercury is known as an androgynous planet. It's not male or female. And many depictions of Buddha, as you can see, he doesn't look either male or female. He looks both. And this leads on to me talking about Hermes and the word hermaphrodite, again, which means male and female and being in the center and being balanced 
So yeah, going on to Hermes, uh, Hermes, Hermes was the messenger of gods and um, the, the god of trade and the guide to the underworld. Um, I just want to specify that, obviously, uh, another thing I forgot to mention is that at the middle, in the middle of the earth plane, there, um, it kind of, there's a cave where there's four islands there and it kind of goes down into, not an underworld, but it's like a valley, basically, uh, throughout different mythologies across the world. And um, yeah, Hermes is known to be the ruler of the underworld. Uh, the Romans changed Hermes' name into Mercury, and uh, Hermes has uh, always been seen with a caduceus in many of his depictions, as you can see here. And also, again, like you can see, he's got a very male and female look. He's depicted as both. Um, the caduceus is a very uh, interesting uh, symbol because it symbolises uh, the energy of male and female and being balanced. And in the um, Hindu tradition, it's uh, the two snakes are known as the Ida and Pingala, which relate to electromagnetism and the male and female polarities. And also, yeah, Hermes was known as the bringer of good luck. Uh, the next, I'm going to be talking about uh, ancient Egypt's Foth. And um, in Egyptian mythology, Foth was known uh, for maintaining the universe, uh, doing arts of magic, development of science, and he judged the dead. Uh, he was also known for um, being in control of the motions of the stars and uh, the planets as well. That's what he was also known for. Uh, again, I've spoke about the black sun a couple of times here. You can see him depicted as a, in, in black, which is very, very interesting. Uh, carrying on from the black sun, the most common information in the flat earth community, uh, especially a lot of this uh, if you watch the work of Devin Magdi and Flat Earth Paradise, uh, you will see a lot of stuff on the Black Sun. Uh, the Black Sun is known as the Black Sun of Intent, um, where we can go and speak our intent, and it will bring it will come it will happen on Earth, basically. Uh, this sign, if you can see, is like the division sign, and the middle part represents our flat plane and the top circle is our sun and the bottom circle circle is the black sun and basically these are two counterparts which are the same but they're just different polarities again and this goes back to uh, Hermes of being a male and female energy again yeah the the um, the concentric ring in the middle is known as the event horizon. Everyone enters her eye zone. Uh, reason being it's her eye zone is because obviously we live on Mother Earth, so it's a female deity. And also, yeah, mm -hmm. um, drinking from the Holy Grail uh, is, is another um, thing throughout history which is uh, symbolised of going to the centre and once you drink of this cup, uh, you become very spiritual and you have an immortal life. And this is what the Holy Grail symbolizes. And as you can see, a picture here of the people and it's in the center. And through the center comes the Aurora Borealis. And this is what Mercury in the Black Sun, uh, it projects this light. And this can be seen at the North Pole. Very interestingly, going on to talking about Muhammad and uh, the messenger. And another thing, obviously, all these guys I've been talking, guys and girls, or should I say all these people I've been talking about, well, not people, archetypes, should I say, because personally, I don't believe they were actually people. They're just symbols for the planet Mercury. Uh, going on to Muhammad, um, 
I spoke about how Buddha was uh, an orphan at an early age. Muhammad was the same. And uh, what Muhammad did was uh, he, in Mecca, he tried to convert people to Islam and believe in one God and being balanced. And uh, also Muhammad is known to be praiseworthy. And what Muhammad did to get away from the people who didn't want to convert to Islam, he went towards Medina. And uh, in this uh, time, he had like people trying to attack him and stuff. And uh, what happened was he went into a cave and the cave and what happened was God uh, built a spider web to protect him from his enemies. And I find this very, very interesting because um, if you look at Martin's work, he explains how each one of these concentric rings have a torus field. And if you look at these torus fields, they look like webs. And obviously for people who have studied more on um, the Garden of Eden and the center of the flat earth, we know that um, this place is a very special place and it's not for anyone. You can't go there unless you're spiritually ready. You have to be vegan. You have to be a peaceful minded person. So this would make sense of why God put a web over Muhammad to protect him from the evil. Uh, also, and a few other stuff uh, that I found interesting in relation to Muhammad is that um, in Mecca, uh, they circle uh, the Kaaba, which again relates to the Merkaba, Mercury, and um, it's a black stone. And uh, people who have looked at ancient maps of uh, the North Pole, uh, there's a black stone uh, depicted called the Rupus Nigra. And that's another syncretism I've made there that uh, is very, how can I say, uh, compelling. And yeah, it's just what we're doing is just making connections and syncretizing everything together. And there's so many coincidences, it's unreal. And just before I carry on, I want to say to people that I'm not claiming that this any of this is 100% fact. It's just that. It's just correlating all the information. Instead of dividing it, we're just trying to show the similarities between all the archetypes which represent Mercury and uh, how it alludes and comes back to going to the center. Uh, finally, uh, I just want to talk about uh, astrology in relation to the cosmic egg, egg model and Mercury and syncretize a few things in relation to the days of the week. Uh, I mentioned before that uh, Mercury, as you can see here, is in the center and there's three um, planets either side of it. Uh, Mercury is known as Wednesday, uh, which I mentioned is the same with uh, uh, Buddhavara and uh, in the German, it's called Woden's Day, which is where we get our name Wednesday from. But, um, yeah, and also uh, carrying on from this, uh, Martin explains in his Cosmic Egg model that the first concentric ring is ruled by Mercury, and then our Earth plane is ruled by the moon's moon and sun. Mercury then comes again, but if you know about astrology, Mercury has a, like we've explained, like I've explained in this presentation, Mercury always has a dualistic, but one balanced kind of energy. So in Gemini, Mercury is an air sign, but obviously when it's in Virgo, it's known, it has an earth element. So if, uh, Cancer, Leo and Virgo uh, correspond with our Earth plane. And then in Martin's model, he explains that the lands beyond our Earth are ruled by Venus and Mars, which is the moon and sun of that land. And then following the fourth ring out is ruled by Jupiter and Saturn. And also you can see that 
it's it, it's in order of the zodiac signs and there's a saying in a lot of spiritual work as above so below and if you if you keep going on so after capricorn you will see that uh the planet's patterns repeat itself so as you can see it's uh, venus mars jupiter saturn and then it goes saturn jupiter mars venus and then back to the start so there's there's a cycle going on um yeah that's it really i hope you enjoyed uh what i presented and i hope i made it clear um i'm going to leave some links in the description to check out some more stuff so you can syncretize and see where i've got my work from uh, this is very compelling stuff uh, i've got something else planned uh in relation to mercury as well it's in relation to the film of, uh, called labyrinth starring david bowie and i I noticed a lot of things in that as well. So um, just want to say thanks for watching and um, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Peace out.